Is my voice clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. So, can you recall what you studied in the last lecture? Calcium metabolism and homeostasis. Okay, calcium homeostasis. That was your leftover topic from your first semester in musculoskeletal system. Uh, you you have already gone through hematopoietic system. Hematopoietics and hematopoietic system uh, was already covered. From today onward, we are entering into new organ system that is cardiovascular system. So today's topic will be the first topic from cardiovascular system. Okay, and today we'll begin with the metabolism of cholesterol. Oh, sorry, uh, it's already. Uh, recording has already begun. Okay, so <clears throat> you have already you have already gone through uh, the lipid chemistry in your first semester, right? So how much you retain? Do you still remember what are lipids, their types? Yes, anyone? Can you define lipids? What are lipids? Anybody else work and volunteer here? So no response, you forgot. Okay. So lipids are heterogeneous organic molecule that are soluble in organic solvent, but not soluble in water. And they are usually classified into three broad types. Okay. Uh, they are simple lipids, compound lipids, and derived lipids. Simple lipids, uh, they are again of two types, fats and oils and waxes. And basically, they are esters of fatty acid with longer chain uh, alcohol. Fats and oils, they are the esters of fatty acid with glycerol, uh, whereas waxes are esters of long chain fatty acid with uh, the cetyl alcohol, okay? And then compound lipids, there are uh, um, some other non-fatty acid groups are also present, usually phosphoric acid or uh, this uh, amino acid derivatives or carbohydrate moieties or sulfate moieties. So based on that, we have different subtypes of compound lipids, phospholipids, glycolipids, sulfolipids. And then uh, we have derived lipids, as the name says, derived and obtained from either simple lipids or compound lipids. So, for example, simple lipids, when you break simple lipid, that is esters of fatty acid with glycerol, so you get two components, alcohol and fatty acids. Okay, alcohol is the glycerol here. Similarly, if you hydrolyze phospholipid, you again get back fatty acids and glycerol. Okay. And uh, similarly, there are other lipid soluble molecules which are not esters of fatty acids, but they can still be uh, adjusted within the definition of lipids. They are sterols that may be plant derived or animal derived. One best known example is cholesterol that we are going to discuss today. Okay, so today uh, we, the, the topic we are ta talking, we'll be talking is cholesterol. And the cholesterol is a member of sterols. That means alcohol group containing steroid molecule. And this sterols is the member of derived lipids. Okay, so uh, we are now talking one member of the lipids that you studied in first year biochemistry that is cholesterol which is a animal derived steroid alcohols so now let us define uh, let us briefly discuss or introduce what is cholesterol so if you again split the name cholesterol into different syllables so coal plus sterols stereos so coal means uh, it is related to bile, like cholesteric jundice, okay? Cholecystokinin, okay? Uh, Cholelithiasis, gallbladder stones. 
So anything related to liver or bile duct is prefixed with cool. So that is equal to bile. Stereos means solid and all refers to any alcohol. So what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is uh, steroid alcohol basically originated from bile or liver. So this, this name gives you a lot of information. It, it also tells you its origin. Okay, so its origin is liver and its chemical nature is, is alcohol and it is a steroid molecule. So if you see this diagram, so it is totally, its structure is totally different than the simple lipid you studied in first year uh, lipid chemistry. It's, uh, it's not like uh, esters of fatty acid with alcohol. Here you can see three six-membered rings, ABC, and then one five-membered rings, cyclopentane, one cyclopentane and three cyclohexane ring. And on ring A, you can see hydroxyl group. And for this region, uh, we use the suffix ul, indicating it is an alcohol. And then uh, on ring D at position 17, you can see long aliphatic chain. This is called hydro hydrocarbon tail. So a cholesterol molecule has three components. The one component is alcohol group linked to three position in ring A. And then you have this ring structure, connected ring structure. This is called the steroid nucleus. And its name is cyclopentano. This is ring D is cyclopentane. And ring ABC is similar to the hydrated form of uh, phenanthrin ring. Okay, there is a tricyclic aromatic compound called phenanthrin, uh, which is, you know, all aromatic compounds, they have conjugated double bond, but here you don't see conjugated double bond. So it is hydrated. So when you when we combine this together, what, uh, what becomes the name? Cyclopentano per hydro, because there is no double bond, per hydro phenanthrin. So this structure is present in all steroid molecule. So for any molecule to become steroid, this is the basic criteria that every steroid molecule must contain or have this steroid nucleus called cyclopentano per hydrophenanthrin. And then there may be any number of side chains or functional group to give different types of steroid molecule. For example, in cholesterol, you have one hydroxyl group, and then here at position 10 and 13, you have this, uh, this, uh, this straight line. This shows the presence of methyl group, CS3 group here. And then here you can see uh, several, uh, this hydrocarbon chain, um, okay? So altogether in a cholesterol molecule, you have 27 carbon atom. 27 carbon atom and one oxygen atom, okay? So this is all about the uh, a, a structure of cholesterol molecule. It is a steroid alcohol, uh, basically uh, originated from bile in uh, mammals, including humans. This is highly decorated small molecule in biology. 13 different Nobel Prizes have been awarded to the different scientists working on the different aspects of cholesterol, right from its structure, isolation, uh, its role in cardiovascular disease, and so many things, and drug developments against the uh, lowering of plasma cholesterol. So that's why cholesterol is a highly decorated small molecule in biology or medicine, because it has already bagged 13 different Nobel Prizes. Cholesterol was first isolated from gall stones. You know, gall stone is the gallbladder stone. And gallbladder stone is the precipitation of cholesterol when there is deficiency of uh, this bile salts in your bile juice. So cholesterol molecule gets precipitated uh, and forms hard stone-like structure. 
uh, that is called gallstone. So very first, the <clears throat> cholesterol was isolated from biological source, and that source was gallstone. And the date it was isolated was 1784. And uh, cholesterol um, is present only in animals, not in plant. Plant also contain steroid. They also contain sterols, but they don't contain cholesterol. They contain other type of sterols. It is synthesized in many cells in our body, but mostly in the liver and intestine. So you should always remember that cholesterol is basically mainly synthesized in liver. That's why it is released into bile and it derives its name from this source. But it doesn't mean that cholesterol is not synthesized outside liver. Cholesterol can also be synthesized outside liver in extrahepatic tissue. But in extrahepatic tissue, uh, the rate of production is limited and uh, it is only upon the demand, not always. Okay. And when we have excess cholesterol in our uh, cells or tissues, uh, this free cholesterol with free alcohol group gets, uh, undergoes sterification with long chain fatty acids. And uh, this form is called cholesterol esters. So this is the storage form of cholesterol in our uh, cell or tissue. And when, uh, and when we need cholesterol, uh, this ester bond can be hydrolyzed by the enzyme, uh, this cholesterol esterase, and then we can get back the free cholesterol. Okay. And since cholesterol also being a lipid molecule, it is not soluble in water. It is soluble only in organic solvent. But unfortunately, biological system has only water as the solvent. It has no organic solvent. So, but it is still there in blood and tissues. Uh, so it is not soluble in blood as such, but it is made soluble and it is transported in blood with the help of certain transport proteins. And the combined form of cholesterol and uh, those proteins are called lipoproteins. Uh, you will be within coming few lectures. Uh, you will be taught what are lipoproteins, what are different their different types, how they are metabolized. Those things will be covered soon after uh, this uh, cholesterol and fatty acid metabolism. And then cholesterol uh, is highly correlated with the increased risk of cardiovascular disease. If there is high plasma cholesterol level. Uh, there is chance that it gets deposited in the uh, wall of the arteries and it will clog and block the artery. And when this happens in coronary artery, uh, there is a blockage of blood supply in the cardiac muscle and that lead to the necrosis of cardiac muscle, which is called myocardial infarction. So excess cholesterol in our body is uh, an important risk factor for cardiovascular disease, but it is an not always bad molecule. It has also very useful function in our body that we'll discuss in coming slide. Now, uh, just like you studied calcium homeostasis in our body, there are inputs and outputs of calcium to maintain calcium homeostasis. In the same manner, we also have cholesterol homeostasis in our body. So there is input or influx of cholesterol and there is exit or efflux of cholesterol from our body. And the rate of influx and uh, efflux decides the actual amount of cholesterol uh, present at any time in our body. So let us uh, see uh, the major sources of cholesterol or influx of cholesterol in our body. We get cholesterol from our diet because we consume large amount of lipids and that lipid not only contains triacylglycerol or phospholipid that will also contain cholesterol. So diet is an important source of cholesterol for our body. And then uh, extra hepatic synthesis. Uh, of course, uh, there is synthesis in liver also, uh, but uh, another important source is synthesis outside in the tissues uh, that are uh, outside of the liver. For example, 
uh, adipose tissue, gonads, male and female gonads, uh, they also synthesize uh, the cholesterol. They are extra hepatic tissue. And then the major one is de novo synthesis in liver. This is the main site where cholesterol biosynthesis is uh, takes place. And this is called de novo because here uh, the synthesis be uh, begins from the scratches. That means very small molecule begins with very small molecule that is called acetyl coenzyme A. And there is a long pathway. And after this long pathway, uh, uh, we get uh, the big cholesterol molecule. So anything you start from scratches becomes de novo. Okay? And uh, now what are the <clears throat> exit rules? How the cholesterol is removed from our body? Since cholesterol is synthesized in liver and it is released into bile, you all know bile is released into intestine during the time of fat digestion. So, uh, so when bile is released into intestine, cholesterol is also released. And uh, then the cholesterol moves down along with the digested food and ultimately excreted through uh, any excess amount of cholesterol is passed into the stool. Okay, this is basically free cholesterol. And then uh, next route of uh, exit of cholesterol is conversion to bile salts and acids. That means uh, it's conversion into another product. They are bile salts or acid. These bile salts and acid, they are also synthesized in liver. Both cholesterol and bile salts, bile acid, they are both synthesized in liver. So one way to reduce amount of cholesterol or remove excess amount of cholesterol is to convert it into bile salts and acids. Okay, so that is the second route. And uh, third route is secretion of a lipoprotein called very low density lipoprotein that carries more amount of cholesterol. This VLDL is synthesized in liver and then uh, it, it is secreted into blood circulation. And then from blood, uh, it goes to uh, then again liver, okay, and then get converted into bile salts, released into intestine. So ultimately, it also goes out of the body. Okay, So these are the sources and exit routes of liver cholesterol in our body. Now briefly, uh, when we eat, uh, when we obtain cholesterol from diet, how it gets digested in our GI system. Uh, this thing you will study in detail in third semester in GI system. Here I'm not going to talk in detail. I'll just give you an overview quickly how it is digested and absorbed. So when we eat fatty food, that fatty, that Fats in our food contains all types of lipids, including cholesterol. And as I mentioned you before, cholesterol in uh, body animal tissue is mainly stored in the form of cholesterol ester. So uh, must, must, uh, much amount of cholesterol that we eat is cholesterol esters, but our diet may also contain free cholesterol. Okay, so this cholesterol ester it is not digested in mouth. It is not digested in stomach. It directly goes to the duodenum where uh, the pancreas produces or releases an enzyme called cholesterol esterase. And uh, uh, with the help of this cholesterol esterase, the long chain fatty acid uh, is removed from cholesterol ester. And then we get free fatty acid. That free fatty acid is then absorbed from intestinal wall along with free fatty acids and other fat soluble compounds such as fat soluble vitamins and uh, all uh, fat soluble vitamin free fatty acids and cholesterol they are converted in the form of chylomicron and then they are chylomicron is circulated uh, transport in the blood and ultimately reaches to the liver okay so here you can see the reaction this is cholesterol ester, and then with the help of enzyme cholesterol esterase, this is a hydrolytic reaction. You need a molecule of water, 
and then uh, this acyl group that is fatty acid group is removed you get free cholesterol and this free cholesterol is absorbed along with digested fatty acids okay and ultimately goes to the blood circulation and liver and uh, this is uh, this diagram shows how uh, the digested cholesterol is absorbed uh, specific, specifically absorbed from a uh, small intestinal wall enterocytes so this is the epithelial brush border side of uh, this enterocyte uh, here uh, you can see microvilli with a membrane protein called npc1l1 npc1l1 stands for neman peak c1 like one protein so this is a very specific receptor present on the uh, membrane of the enterocyte and uh, this can specifically bind uh, the cholesterol uh, mixed uh, present in micelle, which is formed during the digestion of lipid. So this mixed cholesterol micelle binds with this NPC1L1 receptor here, and then get uh, enters inside the enterocyte, and then with the help of enzyme ACAT, that means acyl coenzyme A cholesterol acyl transferase. Uh, this uh, converts again cholesterol into cholesterol esterase. So here cholesterol esterase is hydrolyzed just to make sure that it enters the enterocyte. Okay, but once inside the enterocyte, cholesterol is again converted back to the same forms that is cholesterol ester. And this conversion is carried out by the enzyme ACAT, that is acyl coenzyme A cholesterol acyl transferase. So in simple word, this fatty acid group is added on the alcohol group of cholesterol. Now this cholesterol ester uh, then combines with a, a lipoprotein called chylomicron. It is released into lymph and ultimately into blood circulation and then goes to the liver. And the cholesterol is stored in liver. Okay. Uh, so this is how uh, cholesterol, digested cholesterol is absorbed from the small intestine. Uh, I omit this um, uh, this transport of cholesterol in the body. Uh, as I mentioned before, once the cholesterol is absorbed from a small intestine, it is released into the form of chylomicron. Chylomicron is a type of lipoprotein. It carries all type of food derived or dietary lipids. So in chylomicron, you not only have cholesterol, you also have fatty acids, triacylglycerol, fat soluble vitamins. So this is a big carrier molecule, lipoprotein. Uh, and then when it passes through the blood vessel, it undergoes hydrolysis with the help of enzyme. Uh, and uh, it is degraded into this triacylglycerol part is degraded. But cholesterol, then once uh, this triacylglycerol part is degraded, so cholesterol and some other fat soluble compound are left within this lipoprotein. This is called chylomicron remnant. Then chylomicron remnant that is rich in cholesterol ultimately goes to the liver. And in liver here you can see there are chylomicron remnant receptor with the help of this chylomicron remnant receptor. All cholesterol loaded and transported, loaded into and transported by chylomicron is taken up by liver where it is stored and then converted in either converted into bile acid bile salts or released into uh, bile uh, re cholesterol is directly released into the small intestine. Okay. So this is about the transport of cholesterol in the blood. Now uh, function of cholesterol. Why do the living cells require cholesterol? What is this normal physiological or biochemical role in our body? You have already uh, studied the structure of biological or cell membrane. It is a lipid bilayer membrane. The lipid present in bilayer membrane is basically phospholipids. And along with phospholipids, you have also cholesterol molecule. They are basically present in the outer layer of the lipid bilayer membrane. And uh, cholesterol, therefore, serves as an integral and essential constituent of cell membrane. The main purpose of cell uh, cholesterol in cell membrane is to regulate 
fluid nature, fluidity of the cell membrane. OK. Uh, so uh, if it prevents the membrane to become highly fluid in nature, so it gives a sort of semi rigidity to the cell membrane. And then next one is re uh, regulate membrane fluidity over a wide range of temperature. Uh, so it is also one of the essential constituent and it regulate the membrane fluidity over a wide range of temperature. OK. And then helps in cell signaling processes by forming lipid rafts in plasma membrane. So uh, due to the presence of cholesterol in cell membrane, there is formation of raft or cleft like structure in the cell membrane. And they are the place where the receptor for hormones are present. And their cholesterol create an environment where hormone receptor are present and functional. So because of that, uh, cholesterol helps in the cell signaling, which is mediated by different types of hormones. And another function is cholesterol serves as the substrate for the synthesis of bile acid bile salts in liver, corticosteroids and sex hormone in adrenal cortex and male and female gonads and vitamin D uh, such as coal calciferol or calcitriol in our body. So these are other essential products of cholesterol in our body. Synthesis of bile acid bile salts, synthesis of steroid and sex hormones, synthesis of vitamin D. Okay. So these are the function biochemical function of cholesterol in our body. OK, student, uh, I was just talking one sided. Uh, do you have any doubt query so far? Anything I need to clarify? Did I go very fast? Hello? No, sir, it's OK. OK. okay. No, sir. Then that's fine. Okay. If I'm moving too fast, please let me know. I'll slow down. Okay. So I'll just summarize once again. Cholesterol is a steroid uh, alcohol. It is uh, animal derived steroid alcohol. It has 27 carbon. It is a steroid molecule because it has a steroid nucleus, which is called cyclopentano per hydrophenanthrin. And uh, one more thing I forgot to mention, it is slightly polar in nature as compared to neutral lipid. This is because of presence of hydroxyl group at three position in ring A. And uh, cholesterol is, uh, when it is in excess amount, it is converted into cholesterol ester. And this is the storage form in, in our tissue. When we consume fatty food, we not only consume triglyceride, phospholipids, but we also consume cholesterol. We consume both free and esterified cholesterol. For free cholesterol, we don't need to digest, but for cholesterol ester, we need to digest. And it is digested with the help of cholesterol esterase. And uh, free cholesterol is then absorbed from a small intestine in the form of chylomicron. Chylomicron carries cholesterol to the liver and liver takes up the cholesterol carried by chylomicron. And cholesterol has multiple roles in our body. It is the integral uh, component of chemical component of cell membrane. And there it regulates the fluid fluidity of the cell membrane at a different temperature range. Uh, and then <clears throat> Uh, it uh, it forms, uh, it helps in the synthesis of bile acid and bile salts. Bile acid and bile salts are required for the digestion and absorption of fats. It is required as a substrate for synthesis of steroid hormone and then sex steroid hormone produced from adrenal cortex and gonads. And it is also the substrate for the synthesis of vitamin D 
who have recently studied vitamin D, vitamin D, uh, uh, it gets activated uh, in his skin, liver, and kidney, and the activated form of vitamin D is calcitriol, and it has very important role in homeostasis of calcium and phosphate in our body. Okay, so this is all about what I talked. Uh, what is the time? Okay, now we still we have a little more time, so we'll uh, just introduce how cholesterol is synthesized synthesized in our body. So as mentioned before, uh, cholesterol is synthesized virtually by all tissues in humans. So every cells are capable of synthesizing cholesterol. Okay, but uh, but there there is still uh, preference of certain tissue for excessive synthesis of cholesterol. That is as mentioned before, liver is the major site where excessive amount of cholesterol synthesis takes place. Normal adults synthesize, uh, the synthesis rate of cholesterol in normal, normal adult is about one gram per day. Okay, that is thousand milligram per thousand uh, milligram per day. And liver is the major site for synthesis, about 20 to 25% of the total daily synthesis is synthesized alone in hepatocytes and rest are synthesized by other different types of cells, extrahepatic cells. And the other uh, extrahepatic uh, sites where cholesterol, significant amount of cholesterol synthesis uh, takes place is are intestine, adrenal cortex, and reproductive tissues. The cholesterol biosynthesis takes place in different cell organelles. It occurs uh, in cytoplasm. Um, some of the enzymes, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, some of the steps occur in uh, both uh, cytoplasm and endoplasmic reticulum. So major steps, uh, they occur in the cytoplasm or cytosol, and some of the steps of cholesterol biosynthesis uh, take place in endoplasmic reticulum. And since this is a biosynthetic pathway, this is not a catabolic pathway. Cholesterol synthesis is a biosynthetic or anabolic pathway. So you have already studied in first semester the types of metabolism, anabolism and catabolism. Catabolism means a breakdown of bigger molecule into smaller molecule, and they usually provide energy or heat they are exothermic reaction, whereas anabolic reaction uh, leads to the formation of bigger molecule from a smaller molecule and they consume ATP. So they are endergonic. That means the use of heat, they do not give up heat. So the pathway is endergonic and uh, driven by hydrolysis of acetyl coenzyme A and ATP. So the energy required for this intergonic pathway is uh, provided by the breakdown of high energy bond present in acetyl coenzyme A and ATP molecule. So they are the source of energy required for the biosynthesis of cholesterol. The pathway is responsive to change in cholesterol concentration in the body. That means there is some sort of regulatory mechanism for the biosynthesis of cholesterol. So therefore, uh, cholesterol concentration in the body can influence the biosynthetic pathway. If there is low concentration of cholesterol in our body or blood, that will activate the biosynthesis of cholesterol. And if there is already excess amount of cholesterol present in the cell or uh, blood, that will inhibit or suppress the pathway for biosynthesis. So there will be a sort of negative feedback regulation uh, due to the already formed cholesterol present in our body. Now, uh, some major stages involved in cholesterol biosynthesis. There are altogether five stages involved in cholesterol biosynthesis. 
Uh, these are just the uh, broad headlines or steps involved in cholesterol biosynthesis. We'll uh, go into the individual steps in detail in next uh, next lecture. So first stage is synthesis of a very important intermediate called HMG coenzyme A. Okay. Uh, the substrate is acetyl coenzyme A. Okay. And then uh, here. Uh, then the enzyme required is acetoacetyl coenzyme thiolase, and then then this next step is conversion of acetoacetyl coenzyme A, and its condensation with second molecule of acetyl coenzyme A, and this condensation is catalyzed by the enzyme HMG CoA synthase, and this gives rise to uh, the compound called HMG CoA. That means 3 hydroxy 3 methyl glutaryl coenzyme E. So, this is abbreviated as HMG coenzyme E. Actually, this is the slowest step in the biosynthesis of cholesterol. And you know, in any metabolic pathway, the slowest step is the committed step or rate limiting step or regulatory step. So this is the rate limiting or regulatory step in the cholesterol biosynthesis and the enzyme uh, that catalyzes this rate limiting step is HMG COA uh, synthase. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and then stage three is conversion to an uh, isoprenoid intermediate five carbon compound. Okay, that is. Uh, this uh, conversion of HMG COA into mevalonic acid. Okay, and this is this is uh, catalyzed by the enzyme HMG COA reductase. Okay, and this is also very clinically important enzyme uh, because all most of major cholesterol lowering drugs. They are often commonly called as statin groups of drugs. Okay, uh, probably in pharmacology you might have already studied, or you will study in this system only. Uh, this is statin groups of drugs. They are cholesterol lowering drugs. So when we have excess cholesterol in our blood, we need to take those cholesterol lowering drugs, and those cholesterol lowering drugs decrease plasma cholesterol simply by inhibiting this enzyme SMG COA reductase. So when this enzyme is suppressed or inhibited, there will be no formation of cholesterol and that reduces or lowers the plasma cholesterol level. And then uh, stage four is uh, in stage three, this mevalonic acid, there are multiple steps not shown all steps here. Then mevalonic acid is uh, in with multiple stages is converted into farnesyl inter diphosphate. This is a five carbon intermediate, and then this five carbon intermediate, then uh, in stage four undergoes polymerization. Uh, this uh, uh, of isoprenoid into into squalene, so it has a five carbon unit. Uh, this farnesyl diphosphate and they are called isoprenoid unit. They undergo condensation or polymerization and this polymerization is catalyzed by squalene synthase. And then after this polymerization, we get squalene. Okay? It is also uh, an isoprenoid derivative. And then within multiple stages, uh, this, uh, this squalene is this is a 30 carbon. So one isoprenoid unit contains five carbon. This is squalene is 30 carbon. So how many isoprene unit has condensed or polymerized here? Six, six, six five, 30. So squalene is made up of uh, six different farnesyl group. And then the, uh, in stage five, this conversion of 30 carbon squalene into cholesterol takes place within multiple stages. So here is different arrow means there are different stages. 
So ultimately, the second last step is seven dehydrocholesterol, and uh, this seven dehydrocholesterol is then converted into free cholesterol with the help of seven dehydrocholesterol uh, delta reductase, and then we ultimately get cholesterol. So here, uh, this pathway is called de novo synthesis for cholesterol because it's a very long pathway. And it, and it is called de novo because it begins with very small molecule called acetyl coenzyme A. Okay. And all stages of this, uh, what we, we, we just described here for cholesterol biosynthesis, all these stages occur in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay. So I stop here. This, was, this is just the, uh, a brief introduction about cholesterol biosynthesis. In next lecture, we will see the details of individual stage, okay? And then how cholesterol biosynthesis is regulated. We'll talk about uh, regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis. Then we'll talk about how cholesterol is degraded or removed from our body. And then we'll try to correlate plasma level of cholesterol with the risk of cardiovascular disease, okay? So that's all for today. Uh, please hold, uh, hold on for a minute. I'll uh, download your attendance. Don't leave it. Just a minute, I'm downloading. <laughs> 